And welcome, guys, back to the channel here, Lucas from Mars. This game behind in the bottom of the ninth inning. We're just going to go really quickly here. Tie game in the bottom of the ninth. Ontario is trying to win this game here. It tied at four apiece. Kenley Jansen right now pitching on the mound for the Mustangs. And the batter grounding out into shortstop here for the out. So we will occasionally do this. We occasionally open an episode just opening up on a you know a crucial situation or a game that is really really close in extra innings and you know we'll, we'll kind of pile the end of the game here so uh that the next batter there grounds right back to the pitcher kenley jansen taking care of it and throwing over to first for the out so kenley jansen a perfect ninth inning and in this game we are going to extras this is the first extra inning game that we've actually been a part of playing in this franchise. So we are going out to the top of the 10th of the inning. Jake Rogers, the batter here um, for Alberto Mejia, the starting pitcher. And Jake Rogers hits one into left field, and it's gone! Over the wall, and a home run for Jake Rogers. And a nice shot there, and all of a sudden, just like that, now Michigan has the lead here on the top of the ninth, 5-4. to four. And yes, sir, Jake Rogers pumped up there. They are on the road, but he's still excited, trying to hype up the fans here that are the Michigan fans in the stadium, just getting out of the ballpark, so a big home run there to give. Michigan the lead. Robert Stevenson would come on out here to get another save to try and get his fourth of the season. And a one and two pitch here to the number nine hitter. There's a ground ball up the middle for a base hit. So Ontario is showing some life here in the 10th inning. Has a base runner on here to start the bottom of the 10th. As a nice grounder up the middle that gets through. So now the man on to back up is the top of the order and a ground ball in the first, off to second for one and back to the first baseman and they get a double play. So a big double play there and now all of a sudden two down here on the bottom of the 10th and only one more out for Michigan to win the ball game. And I mean that doesn't get it, it that it really doesn't get an easier double play as that one right there right to the first baseman. Now Mookie bats down to hand the last chance. Ground ball, shortstop's got it. Firing to first, that's in time, and that is the end of the game. So Michigan here to open the episode, wins and extra innings here in the 10th. They win this one 5-4 off of a big home run by Jake Rogers. Now, in this episode, we're going to take a look at a good pitching matchup and a good pitcher's duel here, and we will have a couple more episodes left before we get to the... Um, before we get to minor league players and the minor league debuts, and then we're going to really move a lot faster along in this season. Beginning of the season is really just you guys getting used to these teams and getting used to the players on these rosters. Now, we're going to go on here to a game between Minnesota and Vancouver. We have not introduced the Bomber Squad yet this season, and we have not introduced... Chris Paddock or either one of the pitchers that are pitching in this game for either side tonight either so Chris Paddock coming on the mound for Vancouver tonight and taking a look at his numbers he has pitched once this year already um, and you know he's done all right but really has been an excellent uh, pitcher in his career right now one of the best young up-and-coming arms in the league and he has been excellent in this franchise for sure Jorge Polanco coming up as the leadoff man here for the Bomber Squad. Now, taking a look at Polanco, got really good contact numbers here. You know, he, he's a good leadoff hitter. You can count on him to have a, a around 300 average, and that's why he's their team's leadoff hitter. And the Bomber Squad, they've been kind of stuck at a place where they made the only playoffs only one time, and they're you know they've been over 500 every single year, but they have only made the playoffs once. And uh, they're they're kind of stuck in a in a spot where they're just you know they're contending, but they're not one of the top teams in the league right now. So Chris Paddock here pitching for Vancouver. The stats for him, he's an excellent pitcher, 99 overall. One and two pitch here to Polanco to begin the game is a swing and a miss. 
and he gets Polanco there on a four-seamer, 95 miles an hour, and a first strikeout for Chris Paddock tonight. And uh, this team has a couple of really good starters here in Chris Paddock and Hilaire Urias. Now Brandon Nemo coming up here for the Bomber squad. Uh, he has been pretty good. He's been really good. He used to play with a different team. This is only his second year, I believe, on this Bomber squad team. And he also strikes out here as he looks at a call strike three from Chris Paddock. A perfect pitch right on the inside corner. and can't place it better than that. So... Two down here on the top of the first inning, and now Cattell Marte trying to do something here in the first. And Cattell Marte, one of the best hitters in this game. Look at the stats for him. Basically 99s in every single hitting category, and he is so good. In real life, he's doing amazing. He is on the last year of his contract, though, so that's going to be a, you know, a big decision that this Bomber Squad team is going to have to make, is how do they keep Cattell Marte? Because they really need this guy to be able to compete. He is definitely the the beacon of their offense and he's doing you know not an and not an amazing start to the year but uh it's only been a few games but he is such a good hitter now he does pop out here to the catcher to end the top of the first inning here and yeah underneath that baseball and popped it straight up in the air so through the uh top of the first inning nothing doing for this bomber squad offense so now we head to the bottom of the first inning, and now here is Herman Marquez. Really good start last time, didn't get the win. Um, Herman Marquez is also one of the best best pitchers in this game. This is a really great pitching matchup. One of the reasons I wanted to highlight it here. Um, Herman Marquez, a Rockies pitcher in real life. Um, I really like him. He's one of my favorite pitchers in, in real life, and in this game, he is such a, he's such a beast, doing really good in real life for the Rockies as well. Um, and in this game, though, kind of... Struggles a little bit here in the beginning as a nice stop by the third baseman to prevent it from going into the outfield, but it would still be a base hit for um, Ramon Lariano there, the number three hitter. Now Bobby Bradley coming up here, the number four hitter, and he swings at a really bad pitch on the inside part of the plate. And on 2-2, two -two, he swings and misses again for the strikeout. So Ramon, his first strikeout of the game. Bobby Bradley continues his cold streak that he's been on since the season began uh, really hasn't been producing any offense that much for this team now a walk here from Nicholas Castellanos will load up the bases so Herman showed a little bit of some struggles here early in this game here in the first inning and a man on here now bases juice two away Corey Dickerson coming up to the plate so let's see the 1-0 pitch to him. And he hits it a long way out to right field. It is gone. A grand slam by Corey Dickerson. And that is not the first of the year, but that is the first time we've had a grand slam in this franchise in an episode here. And Corey Dickerson... Man, a huge slam there. He actually had it would be his... He would get to eight RBIs of that swing. And he knew it. He knew it right away. Just lets the bat drop. And 407 feet down the right field line. Almost to the top deck there. So, that was a rough first inning for him on for sure. Now, Pete Alonso here for Minnesota. Um, 99 power against righties and lefties. One of the best power hitters in baseball and in real life, of course, hit the, you know, the rookie record for home runs in a season in his rookie year. And he hits one. A drive to left. It's going to stay fair. Will it? Yes, it will. A home run. Pete Alonzo waving that baseball fair and it stays to the right, to the left of the, no, to the right of the foul pole for a home run. And he knew it had the distance, just didn't know if it was going to stay inside the foul pole and give him the baseball a little wave. Alonzo, his second home run of the season, 379 feet down the left field line. So now 4-1 to one game here. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. up for Minnesota now. And he's been on a, he's been an all right player. He was with the Huskies before this. And, you know, he's an all right hitter. He's uh, not anything spectacular but he's not bad either 
and uh, he will pop out here in foul territory to the first baseman. That was a pretty good defensive play there by Bobby Bradley, their first baseman there for the first out of the inning. So now Jose Altuve here coming up for Minnesota. Um, in real life, you know that, that he's a tiny guy. Um, and in real life, I really used to cheer for Jose Altuve. I really liked him, but of course, with him being on the Astros and probably, you know, probably cheating, um, don't like him as much. In, in this game, though, he has over 2,500 hits. He probably would be a Hall of Famer, honestly, in this game. Eventually, he is only you now he's getting to the end of, towards the end of his career, 35 years old, um, and he does strike out here, a swing and a miss. So. Panic, another strikeout, trying to calm down after the home run from Pete Alonso. Now, Ramon Zavala is a rookie for the Bomba squad. He's got some pretty decent hitting stats. I have pretty high expectations for him this year. And he hits a little dribbler over to third base. That was a nice play. Good throw to first to get the out. But they do tack on one. They do get one of the four back in this um, and top of the second inning on that home run by Pete Alonzo, 1-4. to four. Now, at this point here, 1-4, to four, at this point, uh, the pitchers would kind of settle into a groove here in this game. We would move on to the top of the third inning here. Tyler Naquin uh, is up for Minnesota. He's an all-right outfielder, not anything too crazy. Uh, he would hit a ground ball that would get... Up and through the middle for a base hit, though, into center field. So another hit for Minnesota and a hit for Tyler Naquin. Now, Davey Grillon is this team's catcher. And um, you can see here his, you know, doesn't have amazing hitting stats. A couple of years ago, he was really good, actually, in 2024. But last year wasn't great. And so far this season hasn't been very good either. So, you know, see what you see what they want to do with him. As he does swing and miss here, another strikeout for Chris Paddock. I think, you know, this lineup overall is pretty good. It has a lot of strings and it has a lot of, you know, good guys in this batting order. But I do think I do think it has a lot of weaknesses, and catcher is probably one of those weaknesses for sure. There's another strikeout, so five Ks now for Chris Paddock so far through three innings tonight. And again, pitches would kind of settle down here at this point in the game after that. After a rough start for a couple of them, another strikeout here. This is Herman Marquez striking out in his second batter of the game in the bottom of the third inning. Uh, striking out uh, Nicholas Castellanos there on a beautiful off-speed pitch down in, in the strike zone. Um, and to end the third, trying to steal second base, and they would tag him out there trying to go to second to end the inning. Um, and for this pitching staff here, another look at that at that nice um, grab there by Grillin to get the out. I, I really, you know, I think Minnesota's pitching staff, they have a couple of good guys here. I really do believe Herman Marquez is really good. They have Casey Mize, who's turned into a very good pitcher in this franchise as well. But besides that, pitching staff isn't that great, and the bullpen is probably even worse. I don't like the bullpen really at all. There's a strikeout of Coy Dickerson, though, for Hermana's third strikeout of the ball game. And another one here, back-to-back Hayes, is uh, as another strikeout for Herman. So, again, these pitchers settling in. Bottom of the fifth inning is still a 1-4 ball game. But now maybe some trouble as that ball just bounces right in front of the center field. I could tell Marte out there for a hit. So, Vancouver trying to do something here in this bottom of the fifth inning. And now Jose Ramirez coming up here with a man on first. Let's see what he does. And the first pitch to him is inside and it hits him. Plunking him on the leg and he will take his base. So a couple of base runners here to begin. The bottom of the fifth against Herman and probably not going to let him pitch all that much longer in this game. And there he, they decide, oh, the United is done, Herman. They're going to take him out of the game here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Not a great performance for Herman, to be honest with you. And um, obviously the first inning grand slam really, really hurt him and did not help his outing. Um, he didn't give up any any more runs besides that. He is responsible for the two runners that are uh, first and second, though. 
Spencer Turnbow. It's his going to be his job to make sure that this game stays at four to one and that Hamad is not charged with any more runs in this baseball game now. Um, Turnbow, not a very good reliever, uh, has been all right so far to start the year, but you know, very low sample size. So now Ramon Lariano coming up here, and the 2-0 pitch to him is a line drive and it's a base hit. And here comes another run. That's going to score. And Vancouver, they do get one more here. So they add on another run charge to Ramon Marquez. It's now 5-1 to one for the Raptors. And like I keep saying, this Vancouver offense is really good. Um, I definitely think that their offense is going to lead them to a lot of victories in this franchise. Now a base hit, a, line, a drive here by Marte. And look at the leap. And he catches it. He just run Bobby Bradley of a home run. That might be the play of the year so far. There by Katomerti in center. Watch this. Perfectly times his jump. And he just robbed Bobby Bradley of a dinger. That was an incredible moment in this game. What a crazy play by Katomerti. Very good fielder. And he just robbed a homer there. And then a double play to get out of the inning. How about that? Wow. So Vancouver is still up 5-1. to one. Minnesota is still trailing. But, man, I can tell Marte you're going to take one highlight away from this game. That has to be it right there. Now, in the top of the six, Pete Alonso up. He would get a base hit here in the center field. Chris Paddock maybe getting to the end of his night, too. He has 91 pitches on the night. And let's see what they do with him. They might just decide to take him out, and they will. So Chris Paddock, really good job by him in this game. 5.1, very solid innings, only one run allowed. He does, he is responsible for the runner on first base there in Pete Alonso. But a very good start, a very good start for Chris Paddock in line to get the win uh, for sure. Now, we didn't actually record the last half of this game because the recording is only an hour long, and I forgot to repress the record button. Um, Zach Miller coming in here, so... I mean, nothing happened. Minnesota didn't score any more runs. They didn't come back in the game. Vancouver, you know, dominated um, in this one. They got four more runs in the uh, bottom of the seventh inning. So Minnesota loses this one, eight to one. Uh, their offense didn't really do that great. Herman Marquez really struggled in this start, for sure. Now home runs by Dickerson and Ramirez in the game for Vancouver. Their offense did a lot better in this one, that's for sure. And to Chris Paddock getting the win, getting the victory tonight with 5.1 solid innings. Again, five hits, six strikeouts, and only one run allowed, and the bullpen didn't give up anything. Now we're going to move on. Chicago and Montreal again. I know we focused on this game and these two teams last episode, but we have one more pitcher to introduce here. This is a Chicago pitcher that we're going to introduce in this game um, tonight. 2-2 two and two record for Chicago. They're trying to get... Over 500 for the first time this season. Now, pitching in this one for Montreal is Jacob DeGrom. Pitched really well in the first game of this franchise. And in the second, third episode, I believe, did not get the win. Actually got the loss in his first start of the season. No fault of his own because he was excellent in his first start of the year. He strikes out Juan Soto here to end the uh, top of the first inning. And, man, DeGrom just so dominant. Such a dominating pitcher, and uh, he would get the strikeout there in a high fastball of Juan Soto. Now, the player that I want to introduce here for Chicago is Tristan McKenzie. He's a prospect in real life, and last year pitched 16.2 innings and did not give up a single run. With 16 or with 17 strikeouts and six walks, only 11 hits allowed in 16 innings. He was incredible, of course, when he got called up last year. And I, he was a bullpen pitcher mainly, so this is really his first year as a starter. His first ever start as a starting pitcher. And it didn't really start all that well for him as Brad Pinch drives a ball into the outfield. And the, uh, left, the right fielder really didn't play that baseball very well. It goes over his head, actually. And, and Brad Pinch would end up getting a triple there. Now 2-2 two -two pitch is a ground ball to third. But look at this. Brad Pinch is going home, and they throw him out of the plate. That was a very poor decision. And I think it might be because Brad Pinch, you know, he's a rookie. He hasn't played a, a lot of MLB experience. And so, you know, he's just going. He should not have gone on contact there. 
you don't go on a ground ball at third base like that, and he was out by a long shot, out really easily right there. So a impressive first out to prevent a run here in the bottom of the first. Now Andrew Benintendi is up. The one and two pitch is swung on and missed. And a strikeout for Tristan McKenzie, his first of the year here this season. And his first as a starting pitcher. Now, beautiful pitch. Andrew Benintendi, no chance of catching up with it. Now, full count here to the next batter is a fly ball. Deep right field, but that's going to be handled and taken in for the out. So, after one, no score. Montreal really missing out on the scoring opportunity there with a the leadoff triple. They don't score. Now, one and two pitch. Another strikeout here. Now, I was kind of... Uh, Quick managing some most of the game that DeGrom was pitching. I don't really, you know, I pitched with him a little bit in this game, but most of it was quick managing, and that was already his fourth strikeout of the game through uh, the first, you know, few, out, few outs that he recorded in this one. But here against Tristan Casas, kind of losing his losing his pace here, losing the count, and he walks him on four pitches. Uh, Tristan Casas off to a hot start this season for sure. Now DeGrom with two men on, two away in the inning. And he gets Glenn Mercer on a pitch on the outside corner for strike three. Beautiful pitch there by DeGrom, and he would get out of that little jam there in the top of the second inning. So, no score as we would go to the bottom of the second. Now, Kessler here up. He would swing and miss at a curveball down below the knees, almost in the dirt. A nice pitch. Beautiful pitch by Tristan McKenzie. Now the next batter, the first pitch to him is a high fastball that's calling for a strike. The 0-1-1 pitch inside corner and he dots it for another strike. Nolan Gorman looking at two strikes in a row here and now 0-2 pitch and swing and a miss. And Tristan McKenzie absolutely dominating that at bat against Nolan Gorman. Nolan Gorman standing no chance against McKenzie's pitches there. And I wanted to show the, all three pitches in that at bat because that was a really great at bat for McKenzie. Ten the third, fly ball, center field, right to the center fielder who would catch it. Tristan Casas would catch that one. So through three innings, no score to be found here so far in the game. And now Juan Soto who struck out earlier in the game and he strikes out again. A curveball, DeGrom, seven strikeouts already here tonight. And I mean, the off-speed pitches for Jacob DeGrom are so unbelievably nasty. He had so many strikeouts on his off-speed stuff. And his fastball is not terrible either. He does give up an extra base hit here to um, Carlos Correa, who would get into second base with a double. And in the last time he showed you, he had a really great game, and he contributed a lot to... The victory the last time out. And uh, the next hitter, though, would hit a ball in the air. Deep to right field, and it's gone. A home run for Tristan Casas. A solo shot. Or not a solo shot, a two-run home run. And it's 2-0. 2 nothing. Uh, two nothing, Chicago. So now... Dominic Smith, the one-two pitch, swung on and missed. Nasty strikeout from DeGrom to get the out. And it is a two-to-nothing lead now, though, for Chicago as they would get a couple of runs there off of DeGrom. So Tristan McKenzie trying to keep up the good work here so far for him, and he gets another strikeout here and a curveball down in the dirt off of uh, um, Al Gregman. No chance to hit that baseball. Two down now on the fourth, trying to get another scoreless inning. That would complicate things, though. An extra base hit, a double into center field. The outfield here is huge, so that is going to be a double, even though it actually kind of looked like a base hit and looked like just a single there, but extra bases as, again, a long way for Pache to run that baseball down. Now, 2 0 pitch, ground ball. McKenzie has it, throws it over to first to end the inning, so. Nothing comes of the double there. And uh, now, two to nothing still. Another scoreless inning for Tristan McKenzie now. After the end of four innings. So we were going to the bottom of the fifth. 
Three to nothing, Chicago would score again, get another run, and uh, they would start this fifth inning with a base hit up the middle. So Montreal trying to come back in the game, down by a few here in this one. So here comes a 3-0 pitch. It's a liner. That's another hit into uh, left field. So two men on, nobody out. Tristan McKenzie, this is really the first jam that he's faced tonight besides a triple. To lead off the game, and then he gives up another base hit up the middle. Around and coming in to score is the runner from second. And uh, up to second base goes the hitter. And now Montreal getting on base and getting on line. Jorge De La Rosa with an RBI double. So Tristan McKenzie threw uh, upwards of 20 scoreless innings to start his MLB career, but he gives up his first run here in the bottom of the fifth. Now the next batter lines it, and it's actually caught by the third baseman. That was a humongous out right there, an unproductive at bat. Uh, so now we go to the top of the order, and Brad Pitts, who tripled his first time up, and he would hit a fly ball, though. Center field, this should be deep enough to score another run. Making the catch, coming on home is the runner from third, and he's going to be safe. Can't tag him. Leonard Berry tried his hardest, but the run scores. It's 3-2, to two. Montreal only down by one. So McKenzie, a couple of runs given up here in the inning. Let's see if he can finish the inning off, though. He does with a nice pitch. A high strike, but it's called strike three and out. Bregman to end the inning, so... Couple of runs there for Montreal. They inch closer. They're only down by one now after five innings of play here tonight. Bottom of the sixth, still three to two. One away here for McKenzie trying to finish the sixth inning off. And he would give up a double and extra base hit down the left field line here now. And again, McKenzie just trying to finish off six innings. His pitch count not an issue right now, only at 80 pitches here as with two away, fly ball left field. That is going to end the inning. They got the man third, but they do not score him. So, another missed opportunity for Montreal. And Tristan McKenzie through six innings. I believe that would be the last inning he would pitch in the ball game. And a really good start. No, he would try to go into the seventh. And it wouldn't really work out because that ball is drilled to left field. It is gone. Over the wall, and we are tied up. Nolan Gorman, with his first homer of the year, ties the game at four. So we maybe try to push McKenzie a little bit here tonight, trying to get it through seven innings. And unfortunately, just gives up a big home run there and gives up the lead. So we got a tie game now. And again, unfortunate. And that would be officially the end of the game for Tristan McKenzie now. You know, you know, a good start. A good start for him. He does give up four runs, but, uh, you know, two of those, I mean, all four of those, really, he didn't give up a run until the fifth inning. So, all around, a good start for Tristan McKenzie. I think you take that. And uh, especially because he's their number five pitcher, so not necessarily expecting him to go out there and dominate every single game that he pitches in. Now, bottom of the seventh inning here, trying to end the inning is Michael Feliz, but that would be an extra base hit off of the wall and he's gonna go around second he's trying for third and he's gonna get there standing up so how about that a stand-up triple from Alec Bregman who has struck out a couple of times but he gets a triple there and now here we go man on third 90 feet away now and a tie ball game trying to take the lead here in the bottom of the seventh is Andrew Benintendi here Ooh, I mean, stressful moment, stressful point here in this bowl game. And he pops it up on the infield. And Benetendi upset, throwing his back down in frustration to end the seventh. And what a huge out by Michael Feliz, keeping the lead intact for Chicago. My goodness, that was huge. And end of seven is still tied up at four. Benetendi very upset at himself, and he couldn't drive home to go ahead and run. So Saul Broussard coming in the game now. The rookie for the Expos had a, has had a really good start to the year so far. Um, hasn't walked anyone yet. On only at a 1.8 ERA so far in the season. The 2-2 two -two pitch here to Carlos Correa. And he gets another strikeout. Strikes him out on a fastball outside of the strike zone on the outside part of the plate. One down here in the eighth. And now it's Leonard Berry. 
The one and two pitch to him, and he also strikes him out as well. That was right down the middle. Don't know what he was waiting for there. He should have definitely swung at that pitch because that was right there for strike three. And now two down here in the eighth inning. And another strikeout. There's a swing and a miss by uh, their second baseman here. Uh, their first baseman ends the inning. So Solmer Star getting some big strikeouts and getting big outs here in the top of the eighth. Now, bottom of the eighth coming up now. In the ball game, Michael Feliz is staying in the game now. I think staying in the ball game to try and get this eighth inning done. And the first, not the first pitch, it's a deep fly ball. It actually is the first pitch to center field, but right in front of the wall. Man, Josh Bell just hit that baseball 407 feet. But now a 2-0 pitch is a fly ball in the left. Ends the inning. Michael Feliz. A couple of big outs and some scoreless inning here in the, in the eighth. A huge scoreless inning. So we're through eight now. Going to the ninth. Tall tied up. Luis Perdomo going to come in the game now for Montreal here. As he looks to shut down the ninth inning and give his team a chance to walk it off here tonight. One away. Sam Hilliard up to the plate on an 0-2 pitch. Lines a ball down the line in the left field. He's going to get extra bases. Sam Hilliard up to second base. There is a double and there is your going at a run on second base. Sam Hilliard there now with a ground ball but right down the line because of the shift. Nobody can get to it. And now you got a situation here. Christian Pache Ball in the dirt. Man goes to third. He's going to be safe. Now he's only 90 feet away on a wild pitch. So here comes a 1-0 pitch to Pache. And he lays down a bunt. It's a suicide squeeze. And the only play they have is the first. So uh, Glenn Mercer. No, not Glenn Mercer. The... Uh, DH actually comes in to score. Sam Hilliard scores on the play. And a perfectly executed suicide squeeze to take the lead. 5-4 game. Drive to right field and that would end it. But a huge run there for Chicago. And now here comes their young and exciting closing pitcher, Willie Castle, to try and close this ball game out here in the bottom of the ninth. You don't see that play very often, man. A suicide squeeze play to take the lead in the ninth inning. And now Lily Castle coming out. Only one save opportunity so far in the year, and he did what he needed to do. And that was actually the last game that this team played. So now, another chance, another opportunity. 0 0 pitch is a liner, and it's caught, though, by the left fielder. A nice running, a nice run down catch there for the first out. So not only Gorman who's hit a two run home run in the game, the one and two pitch to him is a liner. First baseman can't get it. It's over his glove and into the outfield for a hit. So Nolan Gorman, his second hit of the game and he's now the tying run on base for Montreal. They're trying. They're going to try and get a comeback here. One and two pitch now to Brad Pins the leadoff man. A deep drive to center field. It is caught by Christian Pache. Man, that ball was hit very hard, but it's so difficult to hit a home run to straightaway center in this ballpark. As Alec Bregman is now the last chance for Montreal, and he hits a ground ball to the second baseman. Goes to first to end the inning, and another save for Willie Castle. Another win for Chicago. They would win this one 5-4 and they would get their third win of the year. So a win here by the Blue Sox. Continue this season. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for watching. You've been listening to Lucas from Mars.